Well, thank you so much, Paul, for coming. Welcome to the Sondheim thanks, Project. Thanks We're for thrilled to have me. you. Um, and let's jump right in. So you are the current music director for Roundabout Theatre Company's production of Kiss Me Kate mm -hmm. on Broadway. Uh -huh. You just did a show this afternoon. I did. We're going to get you back in time for your second show tonight. <laughs> That's good. And just yesterday, you guys were nominated for four Tony Awards. We were. We Congratulations. Were. How Thank does you. it feel? Thank you. It feels great. Good. It's great. I think it's a great show. Yeah. The wonderful cast, uh, the dancing ensemble, particularly Kayla mm. Kelly. It's just wonderful, and it's a wonderful show. It's one of those shows that you know everybody can do. Meaning, you can do it in high school, you can do it mm. wherever you want to do it. And it's when you get uh, expertise behind it like this, I'm speaking of the choreography especially. Mm -hmm. uh, it particularly shines, mm -hmm. but it's a great one of the. You know, one of the ones that you put up, put on your shelf, or know that you will do. You know, if if you're a teacher in school or yeah. a, a, a professor in theater, professor in, in uh, college, and, be done anywhere. and a Broadway producer, because <laughs> well, it was done 20 years ago too. So it's yeah. about every 20 years it's done. By our count, this is your 48th That's right. Broadway show. That's correct. Okay. Wow, does it feel like second nature at this point? It feels like point? 208. <laughs> 208. <laughs> yeah. Actually, to have the opportunity in your life to uh, to do what you love to do and what your passion is, like you guys are doing, mm -hmm. it is a gift. I'm, I'm slightly frustrated at the way the musical theater is going mm -hmm. because it's eliminating a lot of crafts. Mm -hmm. I don't mean the subject matter. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't mean whatever. Mm -hmm. That's as far as I'm concerned. That's wide open, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But the craft of the, the, that's involved with doing it, dancing, like you saw in in mm -hmm. Kiss Me Kate, uh, that kind of skill is hardly asked for anymore. Mm. Uh, you know, you 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 do a show like this where it's like tap dancing or that kind of acrobatic or ballet stuff is asked for, and the and the turnout is like enormous. Mm because these dancers don't have any play. They have to sit around doing nothing mm -hmm. in a show with bad choreography or not very inventive or mm -hmm. not as informed as, say, somebody like Warren mm -hmm. who's from the ballet and who's, you know, loves Broadway and that's why he does Broadway. I'll give you an example. We have uh, 16 players, mm -hmm. live musicians. Everybody can see them. Mm -hmm. And you get the experience of actually a live performance in terms of music and everything else. I won't tell you the name of the show I'm thinking of, but basically what it is is the conductor walks into a room all by himself mm -hmm. with two big computer screens and a computer thing in front of him. Mm -hmm. The musicians are in six or seven other rooms and he pushes a click track and they all play to that and he, you know, has a cup of tea. Yeah. That's not the music of theater. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm frustrated about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's got to do with economics mm -hmm. and it's got to do with how the quickest you can get something done for the cheapest amount, mm -hmm. if, and the audience has no, you know, you can't, you can't, you have to train your audience. Yeah. They know nothing. Mm -hmm. So they go right along with it, you know, because they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. They don't know that they've just paid 200 bucks to hear a recorded music, mm -hmm. because when you put musicians in a room like that, that's what you're getting, you're getting a record, mm -hmm. yeah. if that. And you're getting such controlled music with tick, 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 tick in your ear all the time, mm -hmm that you're not getting any nuance, any feeling, any mm -hmm. dynamics. You're just getting a wall of sound that's playing at you. Mm -hmm. And no, I, I as the musician have no input. Mm -hmm. I'm just a machine, like a typewriter. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not gonna lecture anymore, but that's, so that's, what that's what's frustrating me. It eliminates the craft and thereby it is eliminating the, the life well, and well, the, the collaboration. The, 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 the more this happens, yeah. the more this this art form is going to disappear. Mm. Yeah. This is why revivals are so important, mm -hmm. because it gives a chance for young people who've never seen Kiss Me mm -hmm. Kate to see what the theater is about, yeah. real theater. I'm not criticizing these other performances, mm -hmm. but I mean, you know, and I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to mention the name because I don't, I don't care about getting sued. <laughs> I have no money. <laughs> but 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 uh, I do. I don't want to insult anybody's yeah. idea because yeah. the other thing that's great about the theater is all ideas are valid. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you get to try them and you know, and look at look at Hamilton. Yeah, that's brilliant. 
Yeah. I mean, there are things I don't like about it, but again, there's our crafts that are not being used in that show. Mm -hmm. But look at what's happened. Mm -hmm. well, look what is used in the show. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's all, you know, everything, everybody, there's room for everybody is all I'm saying. For me, at, at my age and a number of shows, it's you know I couldn't do that. I won't I won't do a show where musicians are in a room. I won't do it. I won't do a show where we're not in the audience, playing so that people know that we're, it's live and they hear it live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to kind of get some background about you. I want to go back to the beginning. What were some of your first memories with music? Like when did you first decide I, this is that this is what you want to do? The music's always been. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I, my, my mother was a concert pianist, not a professional one, but she played concerts on piano. Um, um, I always played an instrument of some kind from sixth grade. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't always the same one, but uh, I did. Um, so music was always there. It was the only thing I ever really went to. I was no good in sports. I was okay in baseball, but the rest of it was garbage. Um, nothing, nothing got to me like music did, and all kinds, you know, all kinds, classical, rock and roll, everything, and that's still true today. But um, uh, I started out when I really thought I was going to do this as a living. Is, mm -hmm. is uh, in high school, um, we started this little band, and we went from high school, like sophomores in high school, all the way through the third year of college playing together. And uh, that's that's what I thought I was going to do, play in nightclubs. And, and because I had classical background from college, I was able to play in the opera and the symphony sub. So I was I was making a good living. I was in San Francisco at the time. That's what I was going to do. And I did conduct some Gilbert and Sullivan. I did conduct in school. Mm -hmm. uh, I you know that was. But I did musical direction. I knew what that was. I didn't even see. I've never seen. When I came to New York, I had never seen a musical comedy except mm -hmm. for Gypsy was. Ethel on the road with my mother when I was 12 or something. I was a jazz drummer working for this singer and um, I, I ended my the gig with her in um, Minneapolis and I went to Chicago thinking, well, I'm this close to New York, I'll, I'll never get back here because I was a West Coast person. I'll never get back here, I might as well go see what New York's about. Everybody keeps talking about New York. So I went to New York and there was an actor who was in cabaret at the time. This was 1967 or 8, something like that. And so I went to Cabaret. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. I was like, whoa, that's mm -hmm. like nuts. It's, it, it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. it was, and that was the original with Lottie Lenya and Jack Guilford. And it sounds like, you know, a Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney story, but he introduced me to the musical director after the show, who walked out the stage door. Mm -hmm. It was the, at the Imperial. So the, the stage door goes right onto the street. Mm -hmm. And he asked me what I did, and I told him, and he said, uh, do you have a resume? Well, I was taught to carry a resume. So I had one in my pocket, seriously, mm. folded up in my back pocket. I gave it to him, he looked at it, and he said, well, how are you getting back to California? I said, uh, I don't know, I, I just got here today. He said, well, how would you like to work your way back? He never heard me do anything. So I said, uh, well, he, uh, sure, what, what, doing what? He said, well, you could be the assistant conductor and the drummer on the road, to, the road show of Cabaret, because we're, we're sending this show out. I thought, how can you offer me a job when you haven't even heard me do anything? Yeah. But I didn't say that out loud. I said, okay, sure, that'd be great. When is this happening? He said, uh, in um, about three months. I said, okay, cool. And I, I had no idea what I was going to do. I had no money, except what I just got off the job with. And I talked to some of the musicians in that band, and one of them got me a job for 10 weeks of one night stands with this guy that wrote Little Drummer Boy. Harry Simeon is his wow. name. And we went all over the southeast with his band and a group of kids, you know, uh, actors, singers, dancers, doing his other music and Christmas music and whatever and that, show, and that song. And took me right up to like two days before rehearsal. I even got a, I never had an apartment. We rehearsed in New Haven and I took the, went down on the show on the road. And then to be quick about this, Nine months later, he called me back to do Zorba. I said, I'm not coming back. I'm a conductor. I mm -hmm. want to be a conductor. That's what I'm going to do. I decided I'm going to switch. I don't. And once I switch, I switched. I'm not mm -hmm. playing drums anymore. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you come back and play this show for me. 
because I had just gotten home. Mm-hmm. You know, and we just landed in San Francisco nine months later. Uh, you come back and play this show for me, a brand new show with Herschel Bernardi and uh, Lean, and I can't remember her name. Anyway, and I'll give you the musical director's job on the road. So my first road conducting job was with Cheetah Rivera and John Ray in Zorba on the road. Mm. And then he did the same thing with Follies, and that's how I met Steve. Was that Hal Hastings? Hal Hastings, yeah. Okay. Hal Hastings. Okay. And then um, I came back from taking Follies to California, and Night Music was already going, and I there was no job, and he was the only contact I had in town. That's when we did the Scrabble album. Oh, the, the Sondheim Tribute yes, concert. which used to, was, was, was going to be a two piano concert at the York Theater, and it got so popular they didn't have room, and they rented the Schubert, and I said, well, now you got to add an orchestra because you yeah. can't do two pianos in here. And we got an orchestra, and I called up a friend of mine in California, and we got a recording, and that was that. And, and, um, and then after that, I met an Elliot, from, from that, Elliot Lawrence called me to, to take over Sugar, mm-hmm. and I was, I was uh, this is the Mickey Rooney, Judy mm-hmm. Garland part. Um, I was standing back, back in the back of the house learning the show. Mm-hmm. I was about to go in two week, a week, a week from Wednesday, I guess, and I was at a matinee, and a phone call came from the, in the box office for me, yeah. to the Prince office, and I, after the show, and I went to the Prince office, and I found out that Hal had passed away. Not Hal Prince, Hal Hastings. Hal Hastings. And they wanted me to take over night music. And so, again, I, 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 I involved with Steve, and uh, I never, that was the last time I ever did it. I mean, then I did all of his shows from then on in. Mm-hmm. So the only show I have not done for real, either in concert or mm-hmm. in the production, is for him. Everything oh, else okay. I've done. And you've Sat- done. Including Saturday night. Including Saturday night. Yeah. Had, you've done every one of the How Prince Stephen Sondheim collaborations, too, right? Like not, no, yes, that's yes. right. Yes, that's All right. theirs. Okay. That's, that's the only show I have not done, I did co- company and concert, mm-hmm. but I have never done for, for him. I mean, I've done a lot of songs for him, but I've never done the show itself. 